All right, here we go. Making moves. And we'll just give it a few minutes just to see if folks tune in. Live on the Facebook, live on the YouTube. I wish I had a lemonade. True. <laughs> nice little ice. Speaking tea. of lemonade, you ready for this uh, new virtual Beyonce album? Nobody's ever ready for a Beyonce album. <laughs> I'm just glad she gave us a heads up. <laughs> okay. I think she's getting, she's getting older, so it's like, okay, let me not do this. <laughs> Probably be surprised. Let me start trying to break the internet. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing something new. She's already done that, what, 18 times? <laughs> Success on all of it. All right. <sighs> Let's get started, y'all. So, hey, everybody. My name is Saya. I am the manager of Rainbow Alley at the Center on Colfax. We serve youth ages 11 to 21. Uh, and Obviously, COVID, pandemic, the world is going on. The world is really wild right now. So we're bringing you virtual programming. Um, and this is a part of our Summer Academy experience. Usually, we go around and we uh, speak with uh, leaders in the community or organizations with LGBTQ leadership to kind of show uh, what are the skills? How do we make it in the world as LGBTQ plus folks? So super excited to be doing this speaker series. And today we have a wonderful special guest who I care for very dearly. Yes, Queen, come on. <laughs> we have Davery in the building, Mother Glam, giving it Hello. to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, world. Um, yes, uh, Davery is a professional dancer, um, accompanied with uh, Cleo Parker Robinson's dance uh, company. Um, and what else do you want to tell the people, Davery? What should we know about you? I mean, so I've been with um, Cleo Park Robinson Dance for um, eight seasons now as a professional first company member. Um, uh, other background as far as Denver concerned, I am the newest cultivator of the ball scene here in Colorado um, and pretty much the mother of um, a ballroom here. Um, and also um, just taking over the entertainment industry one project at a time. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what projects you got uh, lined up? Um, so I'm actually currently working with a new, um, a new up and coming black owned uh, professional concert and entertainment uh, business that's trying to do a, um, a new nightlife for um, black, queer, you know, people of color, um, and also provide outreach for um, children through the arts. Um, so that's the newest thing. Um, and also working with um, some boutiques in the city. So if you need a stylist. <laughs> I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> Get it ready, stay cute. Mm -hmm. Awesome, yes, come on projects. No, that's what we love to see. We love to see people thriving. Um, and today we are gonna be talking, uh, or tonight rather, this evening, we're gonna be uh, talking about uh, really uh, self-doubt and uh, how do you face challenges in life and still find it within yourself to achieve your dreams and uh, to remain self-sufficient, right? The whole title of this is the art of being self-sufficient, which I think is a very important thing uh, for LGBTQ folks to start thinking about, especially LGBTQ plus youth who may not feel validated in their homes right now, may not feel uh, like they are able to be themselves or accomplish the things that they want to accomplish. Uh, when, uh, when you think about that topic, of being self sufficient or being self sufficient or overcoming doubt, what for you comes up immediately? 
Um, <laughs> one, not to have any. Um, so I completely, it's <laughs> like, nope. Um, Cause the, the, your biggest enemy is yourself. And as soon as you get stuck into your thought, your mind telling you um, all the cons instead of all the pros, you um, that's when you start building the doubt and then you don't accomplish anything. Um, so before I even hesitate to think of the negative, I just forget that and just go and do your own thing um, and just keep pushing forward, keep striving. Um, no matter what you lack or um, what you actually don't have. Um, as far as me and um, dancing, that was a thing. I was definitely one of those kids that wasn't in the academies and went to schools all the time. Um, I kind of mm -hmm. made dancing my own. Um, I did go to-, to I had a, to figure it out. Yeah, I did go to a performing arts high school. Um, but then they people saw potential, but they also saw what they wanted to see and they expected certain things that they wanted to see. And that's not me. <laughs> You're gonna get me when you get me. Um, <laughs> and they thought that that wasn't gonna work in the industry, that I wasn't gonna be able to build a career and that I'm not training as hard as everybody else or haven't been training as long. And I kind of was like, well, I'm here and I ain't going nowhere and I'm probably going to come back. So you're going to teach me stuff. I'm going to leave and <laughs> I'm going to make a name for myself, period. <laughs> Boom. Mm. So in ways you use that as fuel to just kind of like move yourself forward. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, you know, there's some people who can slay who look a lot better than I do on a day on a on a concert floor, but there's a lot who don't look as good as me either. <laughs> Talk about it. Right. Just because somebody else next to you may be may look better or is doing better in a field, mm. there's a whole other spectrum of people who look worse than you. So mm. that's, that's a really, really good point. And I definitely want to come back to that because that really reminds me of like imposter syndrome. Um, before we keep going on, uh, real quick reminder for myself that I need to remind y'all <laughs> that uh, we do have surveys, y'all. Please take our pre and post survey. I have the link uh, below. Um, it is just surveymonkey.com backslash r backslash art of self one for the pre survey. The post survey will be the exact same link. It's just gonna have a two at the end because we keep it simple. Um, so if you do fill out the pre and post survey and you are a youth, anyone can fill out the pre and post survey. We appreciate y'all. But only youth will be entered into a raffle uh, for a gift card that we're going to be doing at uh, in the middle of each month. So I just wanted to throw that out there as an opportunity for everybody. Um, and now we're going to bring it back to the conversation. And Davery, I really wanted to just kind of talk about where when we think about like, and especially for you, when you think about where your doubt self-doubt comes from um, and you maybe feel like you can't accomplish things uh, from a young age, where do you think that really stems from? Mm, at a young age, I mean, your your only influences that you have for that, and you may need to paraphrase the question again, um, okay. the only influences you have are your schoolmates and pretty much your family that you live in, in within a household. Um, but yes, please say that question again. Yeah, no worries. Like, where do you think for you that uh, that doubt that you kind of have to push to the side, where do you think that started from? Like, what, what are some of your earliest experiences with that? Uh, definitely all in school, That definitely in childhood. Um, would just because that's where you first start to compete with other people. You compete to be the top student. You compete to be mm -hmm. um, the top talent or the honor roll or the uh, where they had in uh, school was like principal breakfast. Like when you really made uh, really good grades and they hosted this big old breakfast and it was it really um, segregated the people who were excelling and the people who aren't excelling. 
But um, so I feel like that all stemmed from that point of view as far and as well as your parents raising you and they can only raise you from the knowledge that <clears throat> they gained growing up. So they're trying to put you in a certain direction. And if that certain direction doesn't follow suit, it's that's where um, some issues happen and some um, doubt starts to happen because, mm. you, I mean, as a child, you're like, well, my parents wouldn't tell me wrong and they should know, but you know, deep down inside, you feel some other type of way. Like you, you want to go in a different direction, which was me. I was that child. Um, <laughs> or I made it to those breakfasts sometimes when I applied myself. <laughs> mm hmm. I yeah. To, and I like, I think, too, you made a really good point about this need to achieve, this need to excel, this need to be doing the best out of everyone. And we kind of touched on that before. But I think there's even another point, too, depending on what your interest is and what you're interested in. Like for me, I grew up playing trombone, piano singing and so that was what i wanted to pursue and even as i i changed my major obviously when i got to college because i was like oh this music game is like no joke but um you know even like auditioning and trying to get scholarships and trying to you know get into the degree program uh in the back of my mind were these ideas around well if, what am i going to do with a music degree like what am I going to do with that? Am I going to be able to, and you know, my mom wants to know too, are you going to be able to make a living doing this? How are you going to do that? I don't know. I haven't seen it because it is a risky game. Um, right. But it's also not, it's also in a way undermining your talent that you do have, that you can make it somewhere. Mm -hmm. You have always had that thing where I was actually, uh, I thought I was going to be a musician when I was in the fourth grade. Like, yes, slap me a violin. Let me do this real quick. <laughs> like, that's what I'm going to do. Um, fifth grade happened and there was no more violin. Um, then I was like, well, what do I do? Mm -hmm. Everybody has known me since the third grade as that boy who dances all the time. Um, so I started getting to, to middle school and things started changing. But it didn't go to dance. It went to... Um, Athletics. I thought I was going to be um, a track star um, or maybe a soccer player, um, but that was that was fifth grade. By sixth grade, I found out that um, a woman named Lorian Gibson, um, who mm. is uh, right, P Diddy, Puff Daddy, <laughs> whatever name you know him as, that was his main choreographer um, back in the day. And I found out like she made a career out of just dancing. And you saw all the commas that came along with those, like, okay, mm -hmm. well, I'm gonna do the same thing. Cause I'm sitting here learning the same step. So if I can do the same step, that means I could probably have the same job. Um, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how everything just took off. By the time I went to high school, um, everything changed and it was like dance, nothing but dance. And it was like, why would I even try to waste this talent um, and how passionate I am for it, I'm going to use it. Um, of course, then, you know, mm -hmm. when college, you're like, okay, so here's another direction in my life. Clearly, I'm going to pursue dance, but like like your mother saying, or my mother said, how are you going to make a living from that? Well, how did you make a living from what you got? Parts. <laughs> 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 so it's possible because people have office jobs and people have entertainment jobs and they all pay their bills and survive off of it. So that's all I need from life is to do what I want to do and pay some bills um, and then enjoy life as well um, by doing things that I love to do. So clearly you're like, oh, yeah, let's fill out grants and loans and applications for all these colleges for dance and all my dance friends are doing it um which i was i was looking at me and all my friends you can clearly see that i was going to be the one that was going to make it um i was definitely <laughs> no shade <laughs> um, <laughs> they loved it as a hobby and i loved it as a lifestyle mm. um and mm -hmm. um 
They were. I think too, that's them. an important difference to make. To make. Mm hmm. Knowing Did knowing so. how to chase a dream that's either a hobby or a lifestyle is completely different. Because a hobby you can put down in, I don't know it, it until Corona happens again. You pick that hobby back up. <laughs> I, I haven't put down dance, nor have I gave it a rest. I mean, I did those that first month, um, but it's still a thing. It's not a hobby um, even to this day. Um, but thinking that my life was going to change again from college and listen to my uh, parents talk about lifestyle and making a career out of this. And uh, a lot of colleges seeing me as a black person, a black male that dances. Let's give them a full ride. Normal people or people who like opportunity a lot are gonna jump on it. I didn't jump on it. I didn't want to just take any opportunity unless I really deserved it or really needed it. And I felt like that was a handout and was like, oh, we're going to give you this money because you fit this category and that category. So I was like, mm -hmm. uh, so you, they, you serve their purpose, but can they serve yours? Right, right. Like you're not even that great of a, a dance program. I mean, you're pretty good in the city. Um, there are better. And I just didn't want to, I didn't want to waste my time trying to go through that process. So I became um, a marketing major. And I was like, yes, mm -hmm. I'm going to do sales and business and get these places, <laughs> you know, up and running. Um, that lasted a year because I still love to dance. I actually, all my uh, elective classes were dance classes that I took. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like you doing it again. You're like maybe I'll like pick up a minor. <laughs> I sure might. Yeah. I was like ooh, maybe I should make this a minor. But I mean, school for me only lasted a year and a half. I was making the dean's list. It's like it's no problem. But I'm like, I actually don't want to pursue marketing in this way because at the same time, I was working as a ballroom professional, <laughs> still dancing even after high school right after high school i was dancing and i was learning about marketing and sales from being a ballroom instructor so i'm like i mm -hmm. to school that my mom is like well either you're working you're in school i was like i'm gonna take a year off and then i'm gonna i'm gonna meet you on the other side i did that and it wasn't fulfilling for me because marketing isn't a passion of mine it's a hobby mm -hmm. Um, it's a means to an end, really. Right. Like, I, if I need to transition to something else, then I can. Or if I want to do for myself, I know marketing and I know sales for a dancer. Like, you need to know that kind of stuff when you work in an industry, <clears throat> even at 20 years old. Um, Absolutely. And some people know at 14 years old. Um, but I stopped all that because I was like, I already know how to dance. I just need to keep my training up. I don't need to pay however many hundreds of thousands of dollars for four years to get a sheet of paper that says I can dance. I already know how to dance. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go on mm. a job. So I did that instead and booked a job. Um, and then as far as, as marketing goes, there was that class was boring me because I already knew stuff and I could already implement that into my own life. So my dancing and my marketing have become my lifestyle. Um, mm -hmm. So breaking through, breaking through all that from a young age and trying to figure out what life is supposed to be for yourself or what people are telling you have, will alter. Um, but as you see, I made my own way. And yes. I'm currently 30 years old, still a professional dancer and an international touring well worldwide recognized dance company <laughs> talk about it and i know we're talking a whole lot about uh dance because that's definitely your profession and i just wanted to make the point that i think a lot of the things you're talking about you know it doesn't necessarily matter what your passion is right it's more so find the opportunities in the things that you love 
And that's really what I got from you was you don't necessarily have to go the traditional route of college to get them to get a degree in marketing. You can learn marketing on the job. You can learn marketing while you are still uh, doing other things. I remember for me, I got really into kind of social justice work and activism. And really, my passion is kind of group healing and how do we process our emotions and i learned that just by watching other people do it and like going to more things and just being like oh i like that style i like how she did that i'm gonna start trying to see how can i incorporate that or this is how they set this event up this is all the logistics that went into it and all the work that went into planning this how do i like take that on and make that something for me so i appreciate you going in all those different avenues of how you really like took the different things you need to be successful and just found your own way of uh, kind of accomplishing that. Yeah, how was it for you? Like, you're ahead. Exposed, um, the examples that you have is like, oh, you can pull from this and pull from that. And well, how do you think college even happened? It's a business. They had to make a curriculum. Mm -hmm. They didn't have it pre-written from the prehistoric times to tell me what, uh, <laughs> A biologist needs to know on a per like superior mm -hmm. level they had to pull from stuff they had to figure things out so i just figure like oh well that's a business i'm not investing in it because i want to be a star Ooh. artist <laughs> money <laughs> <laughs> you better claim it starving artists <laughs> Uh, for you what was it like going through all of those transitions trying to find your niche like what were, what were some of the like good things about it and what were some of the struggles of it um as far as starting a career um it was actually pretty easy um <laughs> when you just got talent like this it just I happened mean, i mean i could i could say that but i mean there's a lot of people with talent that have no drive like i said mm -hmm. there are people that look better than me on stage and they aren't where i'm at and never have been where I'm at. They could have, but they had no drive. Um, so the the things that some of them have, they have had um, really bad moments for my dancers who decided to go to LA, dancers who decided to go to Atlanta or New York or across the sea, um, probably had more issues than I did. Um, because all I did was apply myself. I told you in the beginning, when I apply myself, I will succeed. And that's on period poo. Um, but <laughs> I literally one day was flipping through a magazine and saw that there was an audition in Dayton, Ohio for a professional black dance company. And I was like, great, I'm tired of being a barroom instructor. Let's do it. That simple. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't touched a ballet bar in six years, um, but I mean, at least I've still been dancing. <laughs> so <that was laughs> no worried about, got ready for that in like a month and a half with another dancer of mine. We went down there for our audition, made it. Um, the struggle though was I've never been a starving artist. Um, mm. I didn't know what that was like because I worked full-time jobs um and getting into that professional dance life of how many hours you are actually committed to class and rehearsals and performances is daunting and then you realize how many actual hours of work you have to do to make ends meet was like mind-blowing so here it is, you're here trying to chase your dreams, trying to like put in all this effort and energy into making it in the world. And at the same time, you still have to eat. <laughs> right, because like, they, I mean, dancing, some, peop some people's parents is right, dancing don't pay, um, but it does at the same time. Um, it may not be a, a six figure check a year, um, it may need to be more of a hustle and not your main job. It may need to be your second. I've luckily made it my first, um, praise Lord. Um, but when I first started in Dayton, I was overwhelmed. Um, and weird life stuff started happening. It wasn't even just because I 
decided to take on this big um, challenge of life. It was, I took it full force, but other things outside of life were just hitting me. Like I had lost a job um, Mm -hmm. because out of sheer ignorance, sheer ignorance. Um, And that kind of set me all the way back uh, with everything that I had already planned because you always, you can't always plan for life, but I do. And um, I did. And uh, like five months into it kind of backfired and uh, that struggle happened. Um, I spent a season there and I moved right back to my hometown and um, things started being easier because I had all my connections back. I had all the dance jobs back. There were just little, you know, here and there jobs. Uh, I had two other main jobs and side jobs. So that stuff started making it easier. And then also started my own nonprofit with dance. So things were easy and they weren't as much of a struggle because I had more support in that city. Um, And three years later, I decided to go back into professional life and moved to Denver after making the audition here. And those the struggles started coming back. But I was better prepared this time because I was older and wiser and better looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <God. laughs> Let them know this. <laughs> um, so it was easier to attack the situations before they even arise. Um, mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it was still a struggle. It was like, ooh, this is what a budget is. Do a budget. Stick to it. Because <laughs> um, I want this lifestyle, but you have to, there's some habits you have to make. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, the arts world isn't for everybody. It's not for anybody who is weak. It's not for anybody who needs to phone, a, phone an audience member or uh, call somebody on the line or None of none of that stuff. Um, you have to be tough um, until you mm-hmm. have, you reach a certain point where you can be like. <sighs> so how do you how does someone gain that kind of toughness? I was born with it. Grandmother was tough. Mother was tough. Stepdad was secretly tough. He was the quiet tough one. Um, so that was just not, my biological father is tough he hard-headed actually um so i guess it was just um in my genes in my atmosphere um but um sometimes i have to put on even tougher face and what does that mean um since you're asking that question is um um not backing down um what's the Mm -hmm. the biblical story about king david and goliath Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a whole giant who can wipe out half your town with a a flick of the wrist. Um, But you have one man, one normal man to stand up to a whole giant with just a slingshot and a rock. So you build that toughness to step up to the plate and you have determination that I'm going to knock that giant down which he did. Mm. Um, so you just, sometimes you just have to face it and, and um, not worry about the negative things, um, which is mm-hmm. the doubts. Um, that's mm-hmm. how you get your tough skin. Not becoming- And I think too, go ahead, sorry. Oh, not becoming um, this scorned, hateful person tough because then you're not helping nobody. You're not helping yourself and you're mm-hmm. not helping anybody around you. Um, so as long as you can be tough um, and be able to, like I'm doing, is sharing how to do that, um, that's a lot greater. And then then obstacles will become a, a lot easier. And when you demolish that giant, you can go, whew. <laughs> then you can have your little celebration moment. You know, yes. like, I'll okay, see not bad. <laughs> uh, what I was going to say was, uh, as you were talking, um, I think, too, uh, with the whole David and Goliath situation, that scenario, right, it's, it's 
it kind of, I think we, and you mentioned, sorry, I stutter, but you mentioned, right, it can be scary. It's, it is a scary thing. It is a giant that you said is going to demolish everything with its breath. Like, right. And I think that really uh, showcases kind of the bravery you need to have and acknowledge it. But I think we focus so much of all the bad outcomes, all the bad things that are going to happen when we try to confront this, uh, whatever that obstacle is, we try to confront it. Uh, we think about all the negative things that are going to come from it and don't really stop to think about flipping that on the head and saying, well, what about the good things that may come out of it? What is the good, what, what's, what are some good positive outcomes that can come from conflict? Because until we have that conflict, we, nothing's going to change. We're going to stay where we are. Uh, so you do have to face those big things that you are scared of. So I thought that was a really good point. And I thought you also made a really good point around, um, kind of, you don't need that to go to your head and now you this mean spirited person too, right? Cause you see right. that a lot too, where being tough, it becomes more about showing dominance and asserting dominance, not about actually- uh, You become the bully or you- Having that self-confidence. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh, Chile. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So, and I just want to um, bring it back to, to just kind of gender sexuality because, um, you know, this is for LGBTQ youth. So we definitely want to make sure we hit on that. Um, but at least from my perspective, you know, what it, or not even from my perspective, I'm going to ask you, what, uh, from your perspective, what do you think are some of the issues that we face uh, as minorities, whether that's gender sexuality, you can throw race in there as well, but what are some of those uh, messages or beliefs that we may that people may have because of that that keeps them from uh, being tough or achieving goals? Hmm. That's a big loaded question. You take uh, your time. It's it that's that's a, that's a lot. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. So please go <laughs> in the right direction. Um, <laughs> if someone was to say I couldn't do something, um, and I, this is not even about gender. First, this is just being uh, a person of. Eh, it could be a person of color, but I'm going to gear it more towards just black right now um what is this july now we in yeah denver, july second we in denver just signed um which i did a performance and this um um this whole statewide um i don't know it's a levy or, or something i don't know um what is actually called a, not a petition um but they signed oh an act there was an act um in early March before Rona happened, um, the Crown Act. Um, and if anybody knows what the Crown Act is, um, it's uh, saying, stating that jobs which have already been putting into every job application says you cannot discriminate people on mm. anything. And it lists a lot of stuff. With the Crown Act is specifically for people's hair who look mm. like mine and who look like yours, that they won't hire you because your hair looks like that. Not that it's a color, that the, the texture doesn't look professional enough. And that was just signed. And I've had some instances where, and we were talking about this before on um, if my hair is out like it is right now, instead of being pulled back or being braided down or put in a style that um, isn't distracting um, or having two strand twists is too ethnic. Um, that um, if you have dreadlocks, people aren't gonna hire you. And we had that conversation about dreadlocks. Like I've worked with people who have worked with people who eventually had dreadlocks and then told them that they 
probably won't get hired when they go back out into the field after working mm-hmm. the same job because they have dreadlocks now. Not because they're phenomenal at, in their field, but because their hair is locked or that I can't do a performance with my hair out because it'll get in my face. Where is it moving, sis? <laughs> Ian. Like, I don't, I don't <laughs> understand that. Um, yeah. So even with, with just um, race, um, I've had that issue. Um, and as far as gender, now I'm going to um, just gender uh, of being being a, uh, a slimmer male or being a male period. Um, people don't think I can do a lot of things or think I shouldn't do things. And I'm like, <laughs> you have no idea what I can do. Um, <laughs> I've had people say, oh, well, um, I don't know if we should partner because you're just, you know, we're about the same size and thin. Oh, baby, listen, I may be as thin as your little sister, but I'm as strong as your father on the inside. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had people tell me, well, as far as me getting to styling and stuff like that, which is so weird because, you know, the gays love to style. Um, But I've had people only assume that I don't look like I can dress somebody else, especially somebody that identifies as female, Um, Mm -hmm. cis female, I should say exactly. I've had that like, oh, honey, you're missing out. That's fine. Um, have good luck with that sweater dress. Um, Come on, Ariana. <laughs> right. Um, and then sometimes in instance, I have friends that are um, also trans and they don't, people don't believe that um, they can work as hard, which is like, it's a brain. It works just like yours. If I exercise it to be educated or not, is the difference. Not because my gender is this, my race is that, and my hair texture is this. Um, so those are, those are some examples. And what I really say to that is um, screw them. Um, do your job anyway, if you want to do your job with those people anyway. Um, mm-hmm. And... and uh, what I always say, I'll just thrive, flourish with that. <laughs> yes, that's when they're going to be the maddest. <laughs> mm-hmm. Then they're going to be asking you down the yeah. line, like, oh, what you doing? I see that you're up to this. <laughs> <laughs> What's that black song? Where yo? Oh, I can't say it. Where you at? <laughs> Where was you at? <laughs> Where- <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> <that part. laughs> uh, and yeah, I think too with all of that, um, and I love that you brought those examples. Those are really good examples, uh, right? But even if we're just talking about hair texture, and even if I, you know, let's say I am impressionable, let's say I'm a young person who's trying to make it into whatever field I'm trying to make it into, and here's this person that I look up to who may be white, who may not be white. Um, most likely white, um, but here's this person that I'm looking up to for guidance to get me to where I need to be in my career, telling me that the hair that just naturally grows out of my scalp is not professional. And, you know, but what what messages then am I receiving, right? Like, what am I internalizing from that of, oh, okay, so I need to change my hairstyle or I'm not dressing in the way that people are going to perceive me to be quote unquote cis or passing or whatever that is, or uh, I am male and I do enjoy dresses and I do enjoy this, but now I need to change that to make it into this professional world. And um, yeah, just the shame that I feel like comes with that and uh, how that just kind of fuels you to feel like you're never good enough at the same time. Like you could, like you said, you could be as talented, have your brain, uh, have have this enormous brain that is just packing all this power and yet everyone's ignoring that. Or the fact that you work with people um, like I have and they want to see all of you. And when you're in another mm-hmm. setting, they don't want to see none of you. 
They want to see mm-hmm. the expectation of what you should be to them. Because I don't mind wearing a dress. I don't mind wearing a blouse or a flowy pant or a skirt, leather or chiffon. I don't mind <laughs> slapping on, on a wig. <laughs> I don't mind slapping on a wig. Now I wouldn't do. I ain't, ain't on a daily basis with a wig, because um, you see all this oh, hair. Um, but I, I have going out. Um, but in in business settings, formal um, environments. I have worn this blouse and this flowiness and these earrings and this necklace and maybe did a light beat to my face. That's all of me. Would you see me in my professional field as well as just professional fear as a professional dancer? You see that on stage. I have no choice but to give you the, this body, this talent and this costume. That's what you're going to see. Now, when I'm not doing any of those things, when I'm off the stage and I'm getting back into all of me, I will dress that way. And what I don't need from, um, and it's usually the older crowd and some of the brainwashed mm. crowd that is our age, even younger than me, let's hope they aren't as much. Um, and it's like, oh, which you can tell like what O means is why would you wear that? Mm-hmm. And it's like it's closed. Do you want me to come out here butt naked? But this is that's me. what I'd be saying. <laughs> this is me, and then you should be fine with it because on the other side, I look good <laughs> in your eyes. Talk about it. And, <laughs> and listen, and like, based on Denver's dress code, not everybody is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they they're no just like, you know, they're just mad, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Mad over fabric and hair authority. <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, so, y'all, if you are watching, uh, there is a Q and A section. Feel free to fill up the comments uh, with questions. We want to answer them. We're gonna make time for it. So, while we throw some questions out there, I'm gonna be reminding you uh, kind of throughout as we uh, are starting to kind of reach uh, the end of everything, uh, but. I want to talk to you, Davey, about, you know, obviously you have taken a field that is very difficult to achieve great things into. It's like you said, it's, it's anyone can get on that stage, get their body right and perform, I guess. But where's the heart? Where's the drive? And how do you actually make that into something sustainable? And I'm curious, for the, especially for our young folks who uh, are at the early stages of figuring out what their career goal is, uh, whether that's they, and you know, with some of the interests, I think people also don't necessarily see their, the value in, you know, there's a lot of cosplayers out there, for example, and it's like, you know, that's costume design, right? That is, you know, that's that's uh, construction, that is garment construction. You can turn that into something, you know how to make dresses, you know how to make uh, pants and all these things, and you can go to a ball, you can uh, project one way if you want to, whatever that is, whatever your goal is, right? But how do we take that passion that we have that we don't really see the value in and uh, make a plan to really achieve uh, goals? Well, the first thing is you can't have a goal that you don't see value in. If you yourself don't see the value in it, then that's called a hobby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, it's, it's okay to have a ton of hobbies and feel like there's value in each and every one of them. And you're thinking like, well, maybe something will stick. That's fine. It's going to be that way. You're not going to turn 18 and have all the answers. My Everybody's mama, I'm sure Kendra's mama, size mama, and my mama has said, you're not going to have all the answers. You're not. Um, just not right in the in the biggest one of the biggest um words of wisdom it, it literally is a word a word of wisdom from actually a dance mother that I just spoke to maybe like three months ago she said just wait mm. and I was like wait for <laughs> 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 um because you're gonna want to 
especially being younger, you're going to want to grab a hold of everything and try to do everything and please everyone and please yourself and know what you're going to do. I don't even know what tomorrow is. What's tomorrow? Friday? Girl, it shows. <laughs> figure out what you're going to do on Friday. It's okay to wait, mm -hmm. um, especially when you get to towards the end of your high school life. Um, college is going to be pressuring. Everybody's going to pressure you about college. We've already had a conversation today about college. It is a business and is your your right to invest in it or find your own way. Life is a school, not just a building. Mm. I'm going to say that again. Life is a school, not just a building. Talk about it. And I'm a witness of that. Um, so don't think that you need to have all the answers. I definitely, if you are gung-ho about jumping right into college, right after high school, um, do it. Do it. Because sometimes when you lose that fire, you don't return and then you build regret. Um, mm -hmm. But if you, you get to that, like I did, I got to the very end of senior year of high school and I was like, okay, I'm ready for this cap and gown and these after parties. <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> I um I took a year. I uh, you know, being you think like you've been in school all your life, which you have, and you feel like it's been mm -hmm. so long, like girls been it's only been 13 years. You're least expected to be on this earth more than 80 years of life. So you have plenty of it. And don't think like I've been in school every single year, I just need to break. Okay. I myself took a break. Um, you know, even the Lord rest on the seventh day. So I rested for a whole year. But I, I took that time to make a plan to figure out what my actual goals were, which mm -hmm. I found it was dancing, which I found out it could be marketing. Um, and then it's just like you take that break, however long you need it to be. I, my original break was to wait uh, a semester, um, but that semester turned into a whole different school year. So that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. You're not you're not going to have all the answers. Um, also, yeah, trying things to are going to work out the way that you want them to all the time. Yeah. You'll you'll find the value in things. I found the value in dancing in sixth grade. Everybody's like. Well, when, when did you know? I, I knew at a young age I was going to be a professional dancer. That's where I already had. I already found the value. I already had the goal. I just need to get out of high school and out of my parents' house. Mm -hmm. Get out your parents' house. Um, <laughs> Tell it again. <laughs> I also say move. That's another one I say move. Go move. somewhere where you don't know a lot of people and see who you really are. <laughs> and I, you know what? Um, wherever. All these, wherever you are at, um, wherever you are at, that is incorrect English. Um, wherever you are right now, if you have your goal and you have your drive and you have the value and you keep putting yourself out there in whatever city you're in, whatever township you are in, whatever situation you are in, and nothing returns, move. Mm. And if you think you are thriving in your area, whatever city, whatever township, whatever situation it is, and you're thriving and it doesn't grow after three years, move. Mm. I've been all around the state of Ohio where I'm from up until I believe I was 23. I had done everything at least four or five times in different cities with different people. It was so bad that I had so many contacts leaving that they didn't. people didn't know what to do with them. Like I had to, how does one person do all that? And then I'm trying to split it between five other people and a whole nonprofit company I had for three years. After, after so much time, it just didn't grow. Um, and you will feel that you'll feel like everything's just repetitive. Every year it'll flip flop and then go back and then flip flop and then go back. Um, move, um, find some somewhere else to go. It doesn't have to be another state, be another city. Um,
but move. But if you initially don't feel that, it's your time. You're not meant to stay in the city that you were born and raised. It's okay if you've already done the work and tried to make it work. Um, some people um, go on a whim. They're like, boom, I'm 18, I'm out of high school. Let's move to New York, for an example. That's not the best mm-hmm. idea. Yeah, because you haven't really thought it through. Going to those monster cities like L.A. or the whole state of Texas or Atlanta or Florida. The whole state. The whole state of Texas. So there's a lot. (laughs) 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 Those aren't the best ones to just jump right into being young. Um, Don't think that you can because that is if you are ready to be homeless, that's how tough it will be when you first get there. If you're doing this on your own, I have people have done that, but they weren't on their own. They had a mommies and daddies still helping them or they got to a school, which is great. If you go to college right out in a different city, state, fine, do that. At least you have that kind of support. Um, uh, but yes, so value, you find your drive. Yes, and I would say too, to add on to finding that drive, whatever that passion is that you decide is the thing that you really want to commit to and the thing that you're like, oh yeah, I can figure out a way to make money off of this eventually in life, whatever that is for you. I think too, a point that you made earlier that we may not have just like really were pretty blunt about is know the craft, like know what it is that you really want to do inside and out, right? So you didn't just go into dance and just say, okay, well, I didn't take no dance classes. I'm just going to show up to the audition and, <laughs> and see what happens. You studied, you figured out, okay, these are everything I need to know about Vogue. This is everything I need to know about um, uh, uh, ballet. This is everything I need to know about contemporary. Uh, and you really try, and like on top of that, going behind the scenes to, okay, this is how you put on an event. This is how you get, this, these are the marketing, these are the marketing strategies that you need in order to push forward. I think that is also what separates you and other people from uh, the people who it's just a hobby, right? Is or brand new. into the whole thing or brand new. Mm-hmm. Do that brand new stuff in college if you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the time for experimentation. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> not that you can't experiment like on a, a business level, um, but before you try to implement a plan, talk to somebody that has some knowledge about it. You need to talk to your elders. You need to talk to your mentors. You need to call that teacher you probably hated in high school and be like, yo, so this is the <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they can help you and guide you somewhere. Um, or they can just not talk to you at all. Um, but don't just go. I hate, I hate people that think they can do everything on their own with no background. Case in point, ballroom, Vogue, throwing a ball. There's a lot of people out here in this country. I would say this country primarily because people in other countries is doing it. Um, I don't know who they talking to, but they doing it because clearly <laughs> from America and America still ain't doing it right. I don't understand. Um, mm. But there's a lot of people like to try to throw those events and think they know all this knowledge. And it's like, but a ball isn't just an event. It's mm. more sacred than that. It looks like an event. Yes, you post it on MTV, HBO, VH1, Logo, what have you. And it looks like an event. Because you've been to something like that. It's just people look different. They're doing different things. It's more than just an event. And people blindly go into that um, with no background. And it's highly offensive when someone like myself or a whole house of people watch it on TV or attend one and we're like, this ain't it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm gonna go, I also I'm gonna go back because um, uh, Sai, you were saying about how if it was lucrative to make money. I didn't start dance, um, nor did I start a nonprofit, nor have I ever really been 
um, collabor collaborative. Is, can I say that? Can I conjugate that? Okay, great. Um, for money. <laughs> I, I didn't do I didn't start dancing for money. I knew I could make money from it. Um, there's a lot of dancers that drives them. Like that's that's all I'm gonna do. That's how I'm gonna make money is dance. Like there's no other thing they're gonna do but dance. It's gonna hurt a lot of people. Um, but I didn't join it to dance. Um, when I actually started dancing, I was not paid at all. It was literally yeah. a passion. When I tell you you're when you find your passion, you will do anything and you will climb the highest mountain to make sure that your potential of your passion stays up here. Um, Definitely. So uh, that's another thing, uh, trying to get into things just for money's sake. That's one reason why I was like, mm, I understand mom and dad, dance don't make money, but I'm gonna do it anyway because you know what? It's going to money's going to come to me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And to your point, too, like the way I kind of got started in the work that I do was I didn't get paid for any social justice groups that I facilitated, trainings that I did until uh, after college, really. Everything I was doing up into uh, my master's program was uh, for free and for the college campus or for this organization that asked me to do it or I'm trying to get my name out there. I'm trying to let people know that this is what I do. It wasn't necessarily I was expecting a paycheck. And now it's like, wow, that I get a paycheck for it. And it's like, oh, OK, so we made it somewhere. <laughs> we did something with this. <laughs> but I think there's a point to that, too, of like start volunteering, start doing some things that are free and things that you can also test and see is that even what you want to do. Um, Cause ain't nobody coming out the womb of 50 years old with all this experience of this field you're trying to get into. Mm -mm. So like you said earlier, um, they need to work, they need to work on their craft. Don't go out here trying to beat my eyebrows and you ain't never done your makeup. <laughs> trying to beat my eyebrows. Don't be out here making Corona masks and you can't sew um, a hem together, a button on a shirt. Mm. No. Don't be charging outrageous prices for things that you wouldn't even pay for. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Making things inaccessible for a specific group of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she lay. <laughs> uh, anything else that you would add to in the elements that are needed to live a a uh, self sufficient life, and uh, especially overcoming doubt. Self sufficient life overcoming doubt. Um, oh, I told you this the other week. Um, one biggest thing um, overcoming doubt is uh, don't. Don't overcome it? <laughs> don't have it. <laughs> don't have it. You don't have doubt. You don't have to overcome it. So you start thinking mm -hmm. negatively, then guess what? You in trouble. Now you got to start overcoming something. Don't mm -hmm. have it. If it wasn't there in the first place, then you realize you ain't got nothing to overcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, uh, with that, and I think, yeah, we definitely hit on that before. But even to drive the point, like, just further home, uh, you know, look at trying to find those positive outcomes, trying to find the positivity and experiences, even if you are failing, at least you learn you can learn something from that experience. You know, take that and how do you take that and, move, and use it to fuel you to move forward? So, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, you never know. You you can can here. Okay, and uh, Aaliyah said it, dust yourself off and try again. Um, Go off. <laughs> uh, Y'all can Google her. I'm sure y'all don't know who Aaliyah is. Um, ooh, child. Ooh, Chile. <laughs> mm. um, <laughs> Chile. <laughs> but, um, so, I mean, that's it's harder to apply than, than not of just don't have doubt. Um, not everybody can be that cold turkey. Um, but some things to just to help get over doubt, write stuff out so you can physically see it. Don't mentally think mm. stuff because you'll be mm -hmm. wrapped up in this cycle of thinking and processing. Write it out so it makes sense. 
It's like writing a paper and going back through their paper and revising it. So it makes sense. So it's very clear and it's very, uh, what's the word, um, articulate. Mm. Then you have set a plan. Now you don't have any doubt because you can, you have, you've made yourself a guideline. All you gotta do is follow your own instructions that are very clear. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, what, did you, what did you say? Um, you said overcoming doubt and what else? Uh, being self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. Um, man, that this, okay, so the self-sufficient thing goes back to just do it. Okay, Nike, don't sue me. Um, just, just go and do it because me being, my, my experience with being self-sufficient has just come from doing stuff. And, and just because I like to, I, in on top of dancing, in top of voguing, which I mean, I guess is dancing, but um, I like modeling. I like styling. Mm. Um, I also like cars. Um, I just went and was like, I'm going to change my oral. I'm, I like that I know how to fix a brake. I know how to repair a whole car door if it falls off or a mirror. I just, I had people that was like, you want to learn? Yeah, sure. It made me feel fun. It made me feel, feel great. It made me feel self-sufficient. Um, mm. I had never modeled ever in my life. And I did runway shows when I came to Denver. And people were like, you are sickening. And I'm like, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which got me into the ring of the fashion world here in Denver. Um, all the way to the Denver Fashion Weeks, to their mm. side runway projects, to uh, bigger scales and working with international designers. And because of that, that helped not only my my hobby, get it, my hobby of modeling and doing runway, which I found out I like runway, then I like print. I like to move, I'm a dancer, made sense. Um, <laughs> but it's not, it's not gonna be a career of mine, I'm not, no. Um, mm -hmm. Now, if you want me to uh, sissy that walk down a catwalk, I will. Um, but that oh, well, she it, got seen to, it. <laughs> it got to my marketing side of me that I'm passionate about, um, tapped in with my hobby of styling. I love styling people. I want to be a personal shopper. I want to be, I actually wanted to go to college for interior design. Um, I always wanted to do that. But um, I didn't pursue it because once again, it was more of a hobby for me. It didn't seem like I'm not really about to go in here and starting to get to architecture and all that stuff. Like, girl, your your living room looks a mess. You should do this instead after we have a conversation about what themes you like. Done. Let's solve another world problem. Um, but being <laughs> a fashion circle um, and getting with those designers, now that I'm starting to be I'm starting to look, I'd be looked as a person in the ball scene as like mother glam is what they call me. Um, Cause I just be pulling these looks and it's just, it's styling. Now I'm getting hired with uh, companies to style for them, to start doing marketing for them on their websites and social media. And now I'm starting to make that um, a thing. I have accidentally made myself self-sufficient based on just doing stuff because I like it and not doubting like, oh, I might be too thin or I might be too light skinned or my hair might be too long or, you know, whatever. I, and never making it to the cattle call for a runway. Mm. If I didn't keep doing that, I was like, oh, I, I clearly I liked it. I didn't know how much I was going to enjoy it. But I also found out how great everybody loves seeing me do it and loves hiring me for those and or booking me for those. And just from that, now I, I can sit here and style. I can call um, 13 different stylists, designers, and um, curators and have them at my, literally on my phone, I can call them and, and have them set up a whole shoot for me. Um, set up a whole project for me. 
I can pull from their closets, from their collections, and now I'm a stylist. And I think too, that's a, you bring up another point about connection, right? Mm -hmm. I was taught, I was always told that who you know is what gets you the job, what you know is what keeps you there. Like you, uh, but really, uh, you know, to take that even further, really just having a community, having connection, building those connections and like really maintaining them uh, is another important part. Cause like you said, you felt better when you were around the people that were supportive of you and you gonna need those people to uplift you. So you gotta, you know, not burn those bridges and keep those contacts. So that now, there are some bridges you can set on fire and I will help you. Oh, absolutely. I've done some of some people you just need. <laughs> <laughs> and don't even worry about the risk. That's that's the doubt. They may be very important, but they have done something to your that you can't take morally. They have done something to mm -hmm. depreciate your value in any kind of way mm -hmm. that is not completely selfish. Cut them off, burn the bit bridge, drown their baby. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. Just go there. <laughs> no, nobody. Like they did Moses. They try to drown him as a baby. They try to get rid of him. Cut it off. Mm -hmm. Get rid of those. Cut it off. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So we only got uh, a few more minutes left. Uh, I'm not seeing no comment or I'm not seeing no questions in the comments. So that's chill. Um, but are there any last final thoughts that you have for the people? Cause this will uh, still be going on. Uh, it'll be staying on our Facebook page. It'll go on our uh, YouTube page. It'll stay on there. Any uh, final thoughts? Um, or anything that you haven't gotten a chance to touch on? Yes, there's actually one big one we actually did in touch on. Um, and I'm start off with my my quote of um, that I, I, I that I live by. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Mm. Which just because it's easy doesn't mean that's the right thing to do or the right way to go all the time. Yes, I could have got a full scholarship to go to OSU for a dance major they literally would hand it to me just because I can dance and I'm black and a male. That was easy. I didn't want that. It didn't give me a challenge. So it probably wouldn't have gonna change me and it probably would have made my dancing worse. Mm -hmm. um, right, because then I would never been a ballroom instructor and I would have been in school probably too tired to be voguing all the time. So, there's that. It, it it may it may have. I didn't I didn't want to figure that out. Also, um, because there's so much youth, um, your parents are supposed to be there to challenge you. Mm. But it's also okay to challenge them when you get older, like when you're starting to hit that eighteenth mark of life. Things are gonna have to change. Things are a little different. Every parent's going to see you as an adult legally. Everybody's going to see you as an adult legally at 18. 18 for me was was challenging, not in a bad way, but in a good way. Because when I turned 18, I let my mother know, you're going to hear no from me a lot more. I'm not going to agree with you on every single thing. I'm going to be doing things that you may not deem okay i may you know like going out um like uh yeah right being social going out of town and not you know stuff like that just things you and not necessarily do. needing like permission or uh observance right <laughs> right right um you don't need a chaperone to like go right. and kick mm -hmm. it out the city with your friends for the one time when you 18 19 20. You can yell at me now for not going to school. You can yell at me now for getting detention or getting suspended or in school suspension or a, a D in class. What you're not gonna do as a parent now that I'm 18 and either in college or not is do those uh, same kind of things. Um, because now I have, I have more of a choice legally now, some people's parents a little different. You still underneath their roof, 
you buy by their rules. Period. I don't care if you're 20 feet, you mm-hmm. still underneath that roof. They don't make no sense for you to carry. And for those who don't know what carry means, that means continue <laughs> to act rude and belligerent as a child that they carried in their womb. Don't be disrespectful. But also, you're old enough to start challenging your own views to build your own life. Okay? One step at a time, one brick at a time. Like the Wiz, they found one brick at a time until they found the path. <laughs> so did. <laughs> Come on, reference. <laughs> She's she's with the culture, ma'am. Yeah, okay, very, <laughs> very culture. Okay, because we could talk for days or weeks. I can give you so much. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, you know, you can also, you know, if you want to chit chat after uh, later on in the year, you can always hit me up on my social media. Um, yes, ma'am. Always here. Can find you at dd underscore. That's one underscore. Love of dance. Boom. Yes, ma'am. Follow her. It's fabulous. She always posting the gag. She's always posting events, always trying to get you involved in the community. Uh, so especially if you are interested in ballroom, if you are interested in dance, if you are interested in just honestly honing whatever your craft is and are just looking for a mentor uh, that is uh, going to help uh, in some type of way may not be the perfect way may not be the way you need it to be but let me tell you what <laughs> Dave and Mother Glam will get you right on together <laughs> I will surprise you with the amount of potential that I have yes man oh and she's got too much of it let me tell you <laughs> all right y'all thank y'all so much for tuning in uh, thank you if you are watching this later uh, on Facebook or YouTube Feel free to still leave a comment. Feel free to still go back and take the pre and post survey. We still would love that information, y'all. Um, we are continuing to do these speaker events every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock Mountain Time, uh, live on this Facebook page and on YouTube uh, throughout the summer, all the way through August. So stay tuned. If this wasn't the topic for you, trust me, we got plenty more to go. Um, and I just want to also thank uh Kendra and Davery uh, for coming out, showing out. Um, always got to thank Kendra for the ASL interpretation. <laughs> we try to make things as accessible as we can. Uh, so we just appreciate Kendra so much for uh, sticking with us uh, through this kiki and mess that <laughs> we just gave her to interpret. <laughs> um, so yes, please follow uh, Davery on social media. Remember, we do have the Discord page. We are having a virtual game night tomorrow night on the Discord page. So go to the website to learn how you can sign up. Um, and as always, you can reach out to ask me any questions. Um, and I think that's all we got. So with that, y'all, we're going to keep it clean, queer, and under control. And I will see y'all next time. Yes, man. <laughs> yeah.